Hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Happy Palm Sunday to y'all. Yeah. Thanks for being here that we can celebrate together and worship the Lord together. I'm Pastor David. I'm the campus pastor here. Uh, welcome back or welcome for the first time. Um, we're a big family here, and we love that you'd become, be a part of it today in a little bit bigger fashion. If you've never been a part of it, feel at home. Be comfortable here. Um, this is a good place to come and be refreshed by the Lord and to worship Him and to walk in with all that we are and offer it up to Him. And so we're going to enjoy worshiping Him today. And if you would pass those Know Your Row pads along the pews, that'd be great. It'd be a great chance to connect with the people next to you, as well as just communicate anything to myself or Stacy, our Connections Director. Um, go ahead and pass those along, and um, we'll enjoy that kind of a check-in moment. If you're at home watching, go ahead and check in online as well. Uh, hopefully you all got your palm branches, because we're going to enjoy using these uh, along the way today. So. Let me open us up in prayer. Let's seek the Lord now in prayer and uh, come before him and seek him. And God, thank you. Thank you for the chance to come together and worship you. Thank you for another day of life. Thank you for the sunshine. Um, blessed are you, O Lord. Blessed are you, Jesus, who has come in the name of the Lord. Blessed are you, Jesus, who will come again to reign. God, thank you for reigning in our lives. We offer up this time of worship to you and praise you with our voices, with our hearts, with our arms and branches. God, we just praise you with all of it, with all that we are asking that you would help us to hold nothing back and that you would minister to us today as well. And we pray all this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's rise. Let's celebrate. Let's praise the Lord.
Thanks for worshiping with us. Um, at this time, if kids would like to go to kids' church, you can feel welcome to do that. Uh, if you would, please leave your palm fronds here, kids, because you might want them when you return. So, Let's continue in worship. We prepare for your coming, Lord Jesus. In these coming days, we will journey in your triumphant entry through your betrayal and your death, all the while holding hope within. You are the life we long for, our sustainer. We lift our voices and raise palm branches in praise and anticipation, laying ourselves down before you. By your great love, you have set aside incomparable glory and power, demonstrating perfect humility and obedience. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is the one who brings us the kingdom of God. One, two, three, four. Praise is right.
go before the Lord with me in prayer and pray actively even as I lead us and guide us in thoughts and prayers. God, thank you. You are above all. You are so worthy of our praise. You have done so much and we look forward to this week, God, of walking this story of not only remembering it, but looking for you to speak into our lives to see how your story guides us and leads us even as we live each day. God, we want to pray to you earnestly the things that are on our our hearts and our minds. We don't want to hold anything back from you. So God, hear our prayers as we, as a family here, speak to you and listen for you. God, each Sunday is a little Easter and we celebrate today that you will renew us and our hope in you in different ways. We turn our attention to you in prayer. We seek you for this world, for our country. We seek you for the neighborhoods that we live in, the places we get to call home. We get to live and move and have our being in this time and place. You've made it so that we are alive now and here, and so that matters. Show us. Show us all the purposes, all the many little things, all the many reasons why it matters that you've placed us here and now. God, thank you for our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we do pray for all those around the world. So many things we could lift up. The news is full of things that we should pray for. God, we lift up to you just a handful of them. Now, we we pray for those impacted by the Moscow attack. We pray for those suffering in Haiti as violence draws them closer to famine. God, we pray for your intervention to, to provide. We ask for your protection to keep other attacks from happening. We pray against all acts of terrorism and of war. We know those are not of your heart, God. We ask, Lord, for you to be mightily at hand in places, even near to us, God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Would you equip ministries all over the world to to spring into action? Would you use ministry partners like Samaritan's Purse where they're able to, God? Would you allow the gospel to go forth Wherever uh, it is needed to be heard, would you, would you bring it, Lord, and would you use us, would you use others to do that? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we ask that you'd bless Holy Trinity Lutheran Church, Meadow Park Church, 
Overbrook Presbyterian Church, St. Timothy Catholic Church to do the same. God, use them mightily. Let others on this day come to know you better or for the first time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And there are people in particular that we love so dearly that we want to lift to you by name. We, we ask that all those names that are being lifted to you now by the congregation, God, would you be at work in their lives. We pray especially for Carolyn Denner and Becky Harris who are recovering at home. We pray for a number of our members who have ongoing needs like John Dickman and Dottie and George Haggard, Tom Jackson, Bill Kern, Mark Coleth, Carolyn McCullum, Gary Osborne, Jackie Ray, Sam Short, and Luang Zangmeister. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God, we ask now that as we listen to your word that you would open up our eyes and ears to hear from your spirit, that you would speak to us, God, that you would bless Pastor Steve as he brings the message today and allow us, Lord, to receive from you. Thank you for your rich word, which is so alive and active. We look forward to what you have in store. For all these things we pray in Jesus' name. And all said, amen. Please remain standing for the reading of God's word as we hear it today. The reading is from, chapter, from Mark chapter 11, starting with verse 1. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it, and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus, they threw their cloaks over it. He sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David! Hosanna in the highest heaven! Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be seated. Morning, everyone. Thank you. Great to be here with you today. If we haven't met before, I'm Steve. I'm your senior pastor here at UALC and glad for the chance to read God's word with you today and learn from the words and life and teaching of Jesus together. I imagine that for some of us, Palm Sunday, this holiday that we're celebrating today, uh, might be a little more familiar or a little more strange uh, than it is for others. If you're uh, new to Palm Sunday, maybe you're new to church or just new to this holiday, uh, why are we waving these weird green branches around and saying words like Hosanna that nobody says anywhere else in the world? Uh, we're going to be learning from this story. We're kind of reenacting a holiday we're reenacting an event, remembering and celebrating an event that happened in Jesus' life at the beginning of the week, the last week that led up to his crucifixion. And it's a triumphant day. We sang joyful songs this morning. We make way for your royal entry. And we sang these words, Hosanna. These crowds that had gathered to Jesus on this road into Jerusalem, they, they said things like, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. And they welcomed Jesus in. This, this celebration, these words they were saying, blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David, is sort of a Hebrew or Aramaic or cultural way of saying, welcome King Jesus. This is, we probably don't, we also don't use the word blessed. When people come to your house, you probably don't very often say, blessed is the moment of your arrival. Do you ever say that when people come to your house? But this is a way that people in that culture would have said, Jesus is riding in and we're all for it. Welcome King Jesus. 
And, and you could kind of get the idea of maybe if you think back about what they would have known. And different parts of the crowd probably knew different things about Jesus. But you could imagine why they might say, welcome Jesus. And just like think along with their experience or maybe even think about your experience when something happens in your life that you would say like, welcome to that moment. Or praise God even maybe you'd say like, that happened in my life. You could think back like to the beginning of some of what they knew about Jesus. Some of them would have known that from early on, at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, he called like these fishermen and tax collectors and people who were doing whatever careers they were doing and, and, and praise God for whatever work they had to do. But they had maybe felt like left behind or looked down upon by other people. And certainly when other rabbis or teachers or leaders were looking for the best and brightest pupils and the people in whom God was at work in their lives, they passed over these folks. But Jesus came to them and said, you, come follow me. And he saw, he recognized the potential and the work and the grace of God in their lives. And these crowds would have been all kinds of people like that. who would have been left behind by everybody else. But they knew that Jesus saw them and was seeing the kingdom of God coming among them, building the movement among them. So they were like, yeah, that guy, welcome him. And the next thing that they saw Jesus do, some of them might also have been there when Jesus was driving out the literal power of spiritual evil in people's lives and setting them free from what it was that had them bound up in sin, in choices, habits, addictions, the actual power of evil that was destroying their lives, their families, their communities. And Jesus was more powerful than all of that. And maybe you know, maybe some of us in our room know and need to know the liberating spiritual power of Jesus in our lives. And this guy comes to Jerusalem and they're like, yes, vote for him. Welcome King Jesus. Please put that guy in charge. And then the next thing maybe they saw was that Jesus brought healing to people who were hurting. Body, mind, soul, and community, Jesus brought all kinds of healing into their lives and into their communities and into their bodies and into their families. And when he rides in on a colt, the way the prophets said that God's king would ride in, they'd be like, yes, welcome to you who come in the name of the Lord. Praise God for the moment of your arrival. Or when Jesus would teach them the word of God with truth and tell them what it was that God wanted for their lives and what God was up to among them. And he would even teach them like, what about the Sabbath that we keep? And he would bring works of healing on that day and explain how God's word prescribed that, how God's word looked forward to that. And he told them, here's what God wants from you. On this hang all the law and the prophets, that you would love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. And gave direction to their lives. Yes, we would like that. And so Jesus comes riding in and they're like, welcome. We welcome you, King Jesus. You can imagine why the crowds would think about anything else that could be happening. Anybody else who was pretending to be, claiming to be, acting like they were in charge. And the crowds were probably kind of done with that. The people were done with that. Is there anything in your life, habits you have, powers that seem to be at work in your life, whatever, that you would say, I'm kind of done with that. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm fed up with that. Yes, welcome King Jesus. Come into my life. And they would say this word, Hosanna, which is, we say it in English now, it comes through Greek. It actually comes from old Hebrew words that mean save us, save us. If you've ever read the Old Testament, it's a prophet in the Old Testament whose name is Hosea. That's actually Hosea, na, Hosanna, means save us. And it's like a word of worship. You don't say, save me, to somebody who has no ability to do anything, all right? You say, save me, save us, save me from myself. I think you can do it. What's really interesting, actually, is that same Hebrew word that means save or salvation that comes out in Hosea, the name of the Old Testament prophet, Hosanna, is actually also the same root behind Jesus' name, Yeshua, his name, salvation. If you know the, the promise that the angel gave Mary at the birth of Jesus, you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins, Yeshua. And so the, they're all, I think their word, Hosanna, evens, Jesus, we believe in who you are. You are the Savior. We're welcoming you to be you. We want you to do your thing and be you in our lives and among all of us. Welcome, King Jesus. Hey, let's say that together. Can you say, say welcome, King Jesus? Welcome, King Jesus. Yes, please put Jesus in charge. And then Jesus comes into the holy city. He comes into Jerusalem, and he goes to the center place, he goes to the sacred, interior, tender place that everybody had a stake in, in the temple. And he goes up into the temple, and according to, you remember, this is what verse 11, Mark 11, the end of our reading, verse 11, he goes in, 
he looks around at everything, says nothing, and then goes home and sleeps on it for the night. And imagine the crowds are like, well, what? <laughs> what, what did you see? Should, I, should we be afraid? Like, it's so ominous almost. Have you ever had somebody, say someone who really matters in your life, maybe even somebody with authority, maybe, or maybe somebody that, maybe a spouse, a close friend, maybe, and they go, man, we, we really got to talk about something, maybe on Monday. <laughs> and then like all weekend, you're just thinking about like, well, what, what's the deal? Like, did I make them mad? Am I in trouble? What did they see? Um, are there any teenagers in the room? And has your parent ever said to you, we need to talk. Yes, thank you. We need to talk. And, and then, like, you have to, like, wait until they get home from work or until the next day. I remember this happening to me, and I also remember doing it now that I've had to, right? And uh, teenagers, I'm sorry about that. Uh, but now imagine that it's not your boss or your spouse or your friend or your parent, but it's God <laughs> who goes into the interior, tender, sacred place in your life, into the interior of your life and looks around and sees everything and then says nothing yet. <laughs> and you're like, well, wh what are you looking at? I'm going to actually give us a moment. And in a minute, Bryce is going to come up here and he's going to lead us in actually a song, a prayer, to give us a chance to experience, I think, what those crowds were experiencing overnight. <laughs> and having, giving, our ch giving us a chance to reflect on Jesus, walking around in the interior of our lives. But let me remind you, actually, of these words that I already explained as a grid for praying and thinking about this. When the crowd said, welcome King Jesus, and our crowd, we this morning, I tricked you, I got you to say, welcome King Jesus, <laughs> as we welcome King Jesus into our hearts, uh, remember that we've had an opportunity to try other things, right? And, and we're fed up, we're done. As, as you think about the things that Jesus sees as he looks around, in the interior of your heart and in your home or in your relationships. This morning I was thinking about this, or, or in my driving, <laughs> or, or in my financial life, or in my attitudes or whatever. What are the things that maybe you would even agree and go, yeah, I'm kind of fed up with that. I'm kind of ready to be done with that being in charge of my life. Maybe we would say, like we sang in the song, I think that opening song was a really good translation of this passage even, crash in and burn up every idol. Save me from myself. Save us from this. So I'm going to give you a minute. Bryce is going to lead us in a verse and then give us a minute or two for prayer, reflection, even confession. Then he'll lead us in that verse again. And I'll be back up in a minute. But take a minute as Jesus walks around the interior, sacred center of our own lives and, and listen to his spirit speaking to you. Restore my soul, revive my heart, renew my life in every part, reveal to me what's in
Friends, I just want to tell you two things about all the things that Jesus sees in the temple of our hearts and our lives, our community, and our relationships. And the first is what Jesus said about himself in the Gospel of John chapter 3, that he was sent into the world not to condemn the world, but to save the world. That, that he would go on from this moment in the temple where he had plenty of confronting to do. The next day he goes back into the temple and starts turning over tables and pointing them in a new direction. But he goes from there to lay down his life for these very same people and also for you and me to lay down his life so that we might have life. That by his authority, the boldest thing perhaps that he says in all of these scenes, the reason that this crowd is able to welcome King Jesus is because of the word he spoke to them, which he speaks also to us when he said to the paralytic in the house who needed his healing, first, friend, your sins are forgiven. And all these things that we've confessed and brought forward to Jesus, he says over these sins, friends, your sins are forgiven. And the second thing that I want to say to you about all of this is this. Jesus is not done with us. Welcome King Jesus isn't a word for once a year on Palm Sunday if you happen to make it this week and you're not traveling. It's a thing that happens to us over and over again. And I, I kind of want to remind you of where we started in this series in the Gospel of Mark. Do you happen to remember, it's actually printed right in the beginning of your series journals, a lot of you bringing your journals in. If I could point us back to the beginning again, Mark chapter 1, verse 1, this is the beginning of the good news of Jesus of Nazareth, the Son of God. Remember how we said at the beginning of the series that the story of Jesus' life in the pages of the Gospel of Mark is just the beginning of his work. And he continues to work throughout the seasons of history, and he continues to work in the pages and episodes of our own lives. And we say, welcome King Jesus. We are welcoming his work to do this renewing and reviving and restoring work in us over and over again. So that he would do what we reflected on at the beginning even of this message. How he would look out to us and fishermen, tax collectors, accountants, doctors, teachers, all the things that we are. Maybe feeling perhaps that God doesn't have a use for us in our callings. Maybe not knowing, maybe feeling left behind and saying, you, come follow me and I'll send you to follow me in all the places where you already go. He has a place for you and a calling for you. That he would come and work by the, his power, by the power of God to set us free from whatever it is that binds you, from whatever it is that controls you, to do a, a liberating and healing work in your lives. To bring healing to you, body, mind, soul, and community. To bring healing to our church. To set us free and make us whole in him. To speak his word of forgiveness among us and to teach us his word. To teach us by his life and to inspire us by his Holy Spirit. To direct us again over and over again. To understand his will for us in the relationships and decisions of our lives. That we would love God with heart, soul, mind, and strength and love our neighbors as ourselves. And we say, welcome King Jesus, and we say that welcome over and over again, and the thing that he leads us through, the forgiveness that he speaks to us, the resurrection that he works in our lives, isn't limited to the thing he did today, but will be a new thing again in your life tomorrow, and the next day, and next week, and next year, until that final resurrection and renewal that he does for us and for all his world in the new creation forever and ever. Amen. This is that to which we say, Welcome, King Jesus. So I want to make space for us to say that now, in this day, and maybe it's in a new way. Maybe it's in the first way for you today. Maybe it's in a new way all over again to welcome the forgiveness and the grace and the power of Jesus into our lives. Crash in and burn up everything else. So say it with me one more time. Say, welcome, King Jesus. Welcome, welcome King Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Let me pray for us. Lord, we make way for your royal entry into our lives. 
we know that your will for us is good, and that what you do in us is better than anything else that we would seek or anything that we would do. So we make way for your royal entry. Crash in and burn up every idol. Thank you for your grace and for your power to raise us from the dead. We pray that you would do that work in us and lead us to follow you. We pray in your name. Amen. 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 Let me invite you to stand up, please. We make way for his royal entry because Jesus is the King of kings and he is the Prince of peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please take a moment and greet one another now in the peace of God. God's peace to you all, and I, I hope that you all feel so warmly welcomed and part of things here. Um, whenever we have the chance to respond in worship uh, through our offering, we're always having two things go on. It's a, there's, a, there's a practical thing uh, of, of God using this offering for him to, to worship him and honor him. It also allows us to have our hearts trained to put him first. It's also a practical act of generosity where we're supporting Jesus' mission in the life of the church, and God uses it in such powerful ways. Uh, if we travel back uh, to the Old Testament times, we can look back on even times where um, actual produce from the fields, actual things would be gathered and brought to Jerusalem to be part of the gathered feast of worship and offered there as a tithe and offering. Deuteronomy 14.23 um, describes it in a way that the purpose for it was so that people would learn to revere the Lord always in their lives. And so we, we give our offerings first to God that he, he might be, we, we give all of our gifts and our offerings and our tithes, we put those things first to God so that he might be first in our hearts. Amen. And so we share these words together, uh, this prayer, as we take our offering. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you've blessed us with these gifts. With them, we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's respond to the Lord in worship through our offerings.
Hosanna, come Lord Jesus, save us. And the good news is he has and he's come and he welcomes us to receive from him at this table. For in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks. And he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as long as we eat of this bread and we drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Let us pray together the words that he taught his followers to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You are very welcome to come and receive from the Lord's table today. If you'd like to respond to what God is doing and the invitation he gives to offer his grace and forgiveness to you. Please know that you may come forward when the ushers uh, are at your row there. They'll give you an empty cup. Uh, There's grape juice and gluten-free and other things there. If you need that, just ask for those and your servers will be happy to help you with those things too. Um, If you'd like us to come to you where you are, we'd be glad to serve communion to you as well. Just catch our eye and we'll be glad to serve you there. And if this is all new, no worries, no pressure. You can learn about this more. Grab me after the service. We'd love to instruct you in what communion is, the meaning of it, that you might participate with the family of God in this feast that he has brought to us. All is prepared. All is ready. Servers, ushers, please come forward that we might enjoy this together.
the king of my heart be the mountain where i run the fountain i drink from oh he is my song let the king of my heart be the shadow where i hide the ransom for my life oh he is my song you are Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. It is emotional sometimes, guys, to share in that feast together. Um, there are so many little ones who just came through the line that we were able to ask God's blessing upon that this promise we speak of is for them too. Amen? 
and the stories of faith that they will share <laughs> after us are incredible that they go on, that we might continue to share life together. And I'm just so grateful. So pardon me, but I'm not sad about sharing that with you. <laughs> it's just powerful um, to watch and to witness and to give God glory. And so as we traveled this week together, might we share the story with each other and encourage each other? Might we welcome others back? Um, there are many opportunities this week to come back for Monday, Thursday, and for Good Friday. I'll point you to these Easter services um, as well, and there are so many of them. <laughs> so please come. Um, if you're able to come to the 8.30 or the 11.15, that would probably help us overall in the morning for things to go. But let's welcome people as we are here um, to, to worship together. Let's have that spirit of welcome and of getting along together and helping each other participate in, in a big day. Um, and um, there's a couple of things post-Easter I want to put on your radar that are coming shortly that I just want you to know about, and that would be that there is um, a new series after the Mark series coupled with an, a, an adult education hour in the afternoons that would be wonderful to, to learn more about at this part of our website. It's called Free, and I think you'll want to learn more about that as well as our new member class that's coming in uh, later in April. I want to put that on your radar as well for people. It's the best way to get to know more deeply about our congregation and get a lot of quality time with Pastor Steve as well. So check those out, and as well, if you're new around here, you can always go to this part of our website, stay connected, but the best thing to do is to head back to the Connect Center and get to know somebody a little better today. And let's all spend time together after the service, either there or in prayer down here. We'd be happy to pray with you. Please stand as we share a closing blessing. And you're welcome to take the palm branches with you or leave them on the table for the next service, but f please have fun with them. Take them with you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God.